At this point, I've got some kind of graphic that I want to work with. Let's say I then want to add this into my project. So whatever you've got here, go to File, Save. Just give it a plain old save. Then we need to export this so that we can use it in our project. So save it. Then we'll go to File, Menu, Export. There's different ways to do it. One way that I like is save for web. Um, here we will be able to choose some quick presets to accomplish what we want. Export save for web. At the top right, we've got these presets of these different kinds of graphics. Whatever I have cho it has chosen for me, just ignore that. But at the top, we have these various kinds of graphics. So if I were to select JPEG high, I'd have a high quality JPEG. But I need ping format, PNG format. And I have either ping 8 or ping 24. Both of them support transparency. See the little check mark transparency. And there's also ping 8. <coughs> ping 8 is less colors to work with and not uh, not multi-gradient transparency. So I had a cool effect here of a drop shadow that looks weird. So most likely you'll want to, whatever you create, just select ping 24 with transparency. And so what mine had was there's a very subtle gr gradient drop shadow at the edge of my graphic. Everything else is transparent. So when it's on the phone, they will see a little bit of a drop shadow like my icon hovering above the their, uh, their wallpaper. So really the best answer here is just ping 24, make sure it's transparent. Size-wise, at the bottom here, this is set to 512. We have four dimensions that we need in order to replace the ones that are built in to our project. Those are the ones that I wrote down. 36, 48, 72. So from this screen, we can start with the big one image size, change that, change that to 96, press tab, you'll see it shrinks down. So we started with a really large size, which then we're shrinking down to the appropriate sizes, and the quality remains pretty good. If we had started at the small size, the 36 size, and then change the image size up here to 512 or 96 or whatever, it might lose quality. Uh, not quite yet. I just typed it and pressed tab. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change until you lose focus from that box, and I usually press tab. So after I uh, changed it to 96, then we'll go ahead and click save, and then we're going to save this in the folder where our icons are. So save. I'm going to go to my flash drive where my project is at inside my CBDB project, inside the res folder, resources, inside icons, inside Android. I'm going to replace the one that is there. Mine is currently called icon 512. I just simply click once on the one you're trying to replace. It'll capture the name because we want to, I would recommend keep the original names that are in the project because then you don't have to change the config XML file to point to your named icons. By clicking once and selecting, we are about to replace the old version with our better version. So I'll click Save. And yes, it'll tell you you're about to replace another file. Click Replace. And if you were to look in your folder, I had the old graphics there that I played with the other time <coughs> and I've got one of the sizes of my icons and you need to do the same thing here file save as or file export save for web it, re it should remember ping 24 transparency but then you've got to change to the next size 72 tab goes to 72 size 72 pixel size click save and then I'll select to replace the seven the, I, the icon of 72. It remembered the folder I was in, so I can click icon 72, save it, replace it. I have 
I've got that one replaced. Depending on the complexity of your icon, when you start to get to these smaller ones, 36 and 48, you might realize, oh, my icon is too complex at this size. I can't read it anymore. That will be then your task, your extra effort of designing a version of your icon that does look good at that size. And a lot of app developers do that. They do make a version of their icon that looks good at the larger sizes, but then redesign it slightly for the smaller sizes. I won't ask you to do that. You could do that if you want. That's extra effort. Um, if it's a little too small, if it's not readable, that's fine for a class project. But if you wanted to do this for a real project one day to really publish, you should take the time to redesign your app at that right size. Simplify it, usually. Lastly, the 36 pixel size. So now in my CBDV project, I've got my icons, different sizes, correct name, right format. Here's my CBDV icon. She's a smugly judging you on your comic book collection, if you were wondering. So on a similar sort of vein, we have to create these splash screens. Splash? Yes? Is there a reason why you need it's worse that it's just doing save ads? Export gives you a few more options. You know, if we do save as, uh, we have to switch over to PNG format and um, we get icon we get options over here it's somewhat similar I just personally like all of the extra options that you get from the export because you can choose your various settings and then from here is where you resize you don't get the option to resize from a save as okay. you have to do say you have to resize it elsewhere then save as so regarding splash screens, uh, we see that the splash screens are these vertical, vertically sized graphics of different dimensions. And we have a lot more of a canvas to play with. We have a lot more empty space to put more text, more graphics, and all of that. Um, what you could do is based on the icon you've made now you can use that as a starting point and and then add more to it so let me show you how you could do that uh, do a regular save right now if you saved all of your icons already you can then just save then what I'm gonna do is go up to image menu duplicate I want to make a, based on this I want to make a copy of what I'm working with image menu duplicate I'm going to call this splash 960 this is going to be a splash screen of the largest dimension that I have here 720 by 960 click OK so right now it's, this is still just a, a square sized graphic and my uh, project is Splash 960. I've got another tab for the original icon and then a tab for the current project. We'll go up to Image Menu, Canvas Size. We're going to change the size of the canvas, so the, the working area. I need to resize the canvas to the size of my splash screen, which is 720 by 960. So this is not inches, this is pixels. 720, 960. So this is going to expand it. We started off with a certain size, it'll expand it 720 by 960. An equal amount on the left and the top to make it that size. Click 
click OK. So then now I've got this larger size to work with. This is what that splash screen will be for the XHDPI, all of the size right here. Let's do file save as. Uh, I'm still I need to, I still need to save it as a PSD format. The work in progress. I don't need it as the exported ping yet. Right now, this is not a real file. It hasn't been saved anywhere. If the computer crashes, I'm going to lose it. It hasn't been saved. Notice icon 512 does say .psd. It's been saved on my F drive. Splash 960 is floating around in memory. I haven't saved it yet. So file save as. I'm saving it into my MAD folder on my flash drive, calling it splash 960.psd. So here I can manipulate what I've already got, move it around. Maybe add text. So for a splash screen, let's say I took the time to create it, then I will I'll do that export again. This time I don't want transparency. So if I want a simple just white background, you can turn off transparency and you'll see the mat there is white. You can select other colors. If you want really complex backgrounds, you'll have to design it before you do the export. Let's say I just want very simple white. So for your splash screens, I would still keep it as ping 24, but no transparency then you can decide what kind of background color you want. I'm going to save that and in the splash screen folder Android I'm currently replacing the screen XHDPI portrait image. Place the original splash screen, and it'll look something like that. So I need to do then something for each of those, resize them, replace them, and then I'm going to have my own icons, my own splash screens. Well, what happens here is that when I try to do export for these different sizes, I have here written down that I'm going to do 480 by 640. Some of them will automatically resize. There's another one, for example, if I put 320 by, I'm trying to do 320 by 470. 
If I try to do 320, that goes already to 427. If I change that to 470, that one's going to change back to 352. So you can turn off this, this little link. That way you won't have these dimensions linked with each other, and you can type 320, 470. So it'll be in proportion if you leave the link on. Sometimes you need to turn off that proportion because then it's the wrong dimensions, the wrong aspect ratio. So you can turn off the link. Four eighty six forty. That one is replacing my HDPI. And then I need to create the 320. But I need to turn off that chain. and then the LDPI. So I've got my um, unique splash screens and I've got my unique icons and eventually to see the result well I need to uh, run it in Visual Studio I don't need to change any code in Visual Studio if I'm replacing the original files Visual Studio is gonna find those files when it compiles because my paths are still pointing to the original places So the easiest way is replacing the original files that came with the project, and then eventually here it comes loading up. There's my CBDB, judgmental at you, and then the, the app starts. And then if I go over to my icons, it's really small here, uh, but on my on my desktop right here, um, Luke, can you can you see right here? Do you see the little little icon, the bunny girl? So yeah, so it is. That's the idea. The big effort, the big work is Photoshop, creating the graphics, simply replacing the existing files with the same dimensions and the same file types. Then you just run it, and it replaces the other graphics. All you have to simply do is use Photoshop, and that is a big endeavor. But if you've got you know, a couple decades of experience in Photoshop, you can do it. So um, at this point, uh, we'll end the main lecture. I'm going to put a copy of my work in the folder if you want it. Obviously, it's better if you're using your own work, if it works especially, so that you can keep building on it. Quick question, yes.
Yes. So 960, you know, you can see it yourself in your file, in your folder, but it's 720960, that's the XHDPI. So it'd be better just to get them from your own folder because they're all in your folder. Yes. 